I took some pictures of these butterflies while I was at an exhibit this summer. And one characteristic of butterflies is that they're symmetrical, which means they're exactly the same on each side. And they have some beautiful patterns on their wings, too. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to make a symmetrical butterfly of our own. And you're going to get to design the pattern on the butterfly's wings. So now we're going to get started. All right, first you need to fold your piece of paper exactly in half the horizontal way, like a book, so that it's short and wide and not long and thin. And you want to keep track of where the crease is, right there, and where the edges are, because that's very important in what we're going to do. Okay, here's the crease right here. All right, now the first thing I want you to do is put a mark about halfway between the top and the bottom. And I said about, that doesn't mean you have to have it exact, I sure don't. And then another mark about halfway between that mark and the top. All right. Then we're going to make a curved line like this from one mark to the next. And then put a mark, oh, about two-thirds of the way to the bottom, kind of down there. And start a curved line here that curves out and then it gradually gets closer to the crease but it doesn't get really skinny and then up here we're going to put the butterfly's head which is another curved line if curves these curved lines all stop at the fold all right now you want to make the wings big enough and they're all attached at the middle which is the thorax and there's two wings there's a top and a bottom on each side I'm going to start with a curved line that goes from there and goes all the way out to the corner there. All right. And then about, about there, about a little more than halfway down, I'm going to make another line for the bottom of the wing. And it's going to come out, slope slightly down, not come out as far. It doesn't come all the way to the edge like the other one does. And then between these two areas, this is where you can decide what kind of a line you want to make, since this is going to be like an imaginary butterfly. And this is a curved line that I've decided to make between these two points. So that's one option, a curved line, different kinds of variations. The bottom wing is smaller, and it's still attached at the thorax. So I'm making a line, and this time, the line curves and it comes slanted out but not nearly as much as the other line was. And then between this point I can make another line and I can make it curve however I want to design my own wing. So I am going to make a design like this one. All right, let's look at some other options. I've got the body drawn already. I just want to show you some possibilities. You can draw just a simple, slightly curved line and make more of a normal butterfly wing. And you can do the same kind of thing on the bottom, too, if you want. What you want to do, though, is you want to make sure that you get the lines big enough, get the wings big enough, OK? And then you can draw any kind of design you want. And I'm drawing mine out of different kinds of shapes. I'm using kind of a design that radiates out from where the wing attaches to the body. It's like part of a radial design almost. And if you want to try some things with pencil first so that you can change what you don't like, that's fine. And this is what I've ended up with for the design for this wing. Just an example. Okay, now you open out the paper and you trace carefully over all of your lines using a black oil pastel and pushing hard. Now I drew this one with pencil. The one that I demonstrated on a few minutes ago, I used crayon so you could see it because it's hard for you to see pencil 
in a movie like this. But you want to really trace all of your lines carefully because if you drew them a certain way, you must want them to be a certain way. So don't ruin what you've already done. Go over everything like this all the way around carefully and firmly. All right, now you're going to fold it so that the wing is on the inside. It was on the outside before. And you're going to need to rub hard. Now rubbing like this doesn't really do much. You have to use a little bit of a tool. So I have the round handles of a pair of scissors here and I'm holding them with the edge against the table and against the paper and I'm rubbing firmly and that gives me the firm pressure that I need to transfer the design to the other side of the paper. And I can see where it is so I know where to go over it. And I want to get the whole thing transferred because that's how I'm going to make it symmetrical. See, it's really quite faint right now, but I can see all of it. And that makes it so that I can trace over the faint lines with my oil pastel and make them match the other side. And I want to do all that next. Get it all traced. Okay, when that part is finished, then it's time to paint it. And we'll be using watercolor paint. And we're going to be painting in the little shapes. Now remember to hold your brush like a pencil and support your hand on the table and paint in one direction and don't scrub. And try to keep your brush right inside the lines that you've drawn and then that way your color will stay where you want it to go. The oil pastel will resist it from passing into the other shape unless you pick your brush up and put the color in the other shape. And so you want to be careful that you keep your brush where you want the color to be. Since this is a symmetrical design, if I paint the one side a certain color, I paint the other side a certain color too. And I paint the same shapes the same colors. And if I'm careful, I can even put new colors in next to the colors I've just painted because of the oil pastel that separates them. If you don't think you can be careful enough, you might want to wait till it dries. And be sure that you always clean your brush in between color changes so you don't ruin your watercolors and make them all muddy. This is what my project looked like after I finished painting it. I still need to draw some antennas. And then I can even leave it on that piece of paper and paint the background or I could cut it out and glue it on another piece or I could just cut it out and put it up without any kind of paper around it. There's several things I could do.